I told you on Twitter that I was learning Python and asked you if you wanted to learn it with me here on the main channel or on the second one. And uh, <laughs> all the hell broke loose. The other thing, you've been asking me all kinds of questions about why am I living Power BI? Why don't you learn this or that? Or So I think that this video, let's do this video to hopefully explain where I'm at and why I'm doing the things that I'm doing. Okay, so first of all, first of all of anything, I do love Power BI. I still do love Power BI. It has nothing to do with it. And you're probably wondering, like, okay, so if you love it so much, why are you whining? <laughs> and I was actually wondering the same thing myself until last summer. I actually figured out, you know, the summers are a perfect time for, <laughs> for thinking outside the box. So I actually realized why I was unhappy even though I love Power BI. And I'm going to show you because I believe that there are more people that are in the same situation as I am. And this might bring clarity to your situation too. So here's the thing. There's, during my Lean Six Sigma studies, I learned something that is called the Kano model. So the Kano is called like this, K-A-N-O model. It's extremely useful. You know, when I was a um, product manager for physical products, they taught us this. And it basically measures satisfaction. This is customer satisfaction, evaluating product features when you are doing product development. So, And this is customer dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction. And then this is features that are present and then these are features that are absent, okay? So the theory goes like this. It's actually pretty straightforward. So if you have features that are missing and people consider them as must-have, then you're going to find that people will be extremely dissatisfied. Like we're at the bottom of the chart here. This is customer dissatisfaction. They will be super dissatisfied. Now, if you actually deliver them, put them here, let's say, for example, Power BI desktop copy measures. I'm extremely satisfied that they are not there. If they will actually put them there, it's not that I say, wow, this is a garner feature, yeah, no. But it will make me not happy, I mean, it would be happy that it's there, but it's not that every time I copy a measure, I'm like, oh, how good this is. No, but it's needed. And the thing is that the absence of it is what makes me dissatisfied. Things that I always use, for example, is the measures, the folders, and the tabs, like putting folders on the report pane and dropping them there. Things that I do every day, and because they are not there, it does tears me apart, okay? The model goes and says like, okay, you have the must-have features, you have the performance features, and it doesn't need to, it doesn't have to do with performance itself, although it could, there's just features that enhance your product. For example, performance. Let's say that your model refresh faster because they make a change in the Vertipack engine. So, People will be unhappy, obviously, if Power BI desktop is not very performant. If you put it there, they will be more happy. They will not be like, oh, wow. But they will be more happy. So these are things that, you know, increase satisfaction. Don't blow your mind, but increase satisfaction. And then you have here the delighters. And for me, for example, this was like the um, bookmarks and the drill throughs. I didn't know that they were possible. I would have never asked for them. So the, the, the absence of it doesn't make it this unhappy because I don't know that they could be there. But when you actually put them there, I'm going to be thrilled. I do remember those features when they came out and it was a big explosion in the community because it was so cool. And you might say, okay, so why was it a big explosion then and not now? Because now they're actually producing features that are really cool. But a lot of people like me are having issues enjoying them. And the reason is explained here in this kind of model. The kind of model says that if you have a lot of dissatisfiers, no matter what you do on performance on the lighters, people will not care. We are so wrapped up in our daily lives 
fighting these small things that nothing will make us happy. And I think this is one of the things that we're seeing today with Power BI, that um, the desktop, some of the features that are missing there are making people not just love the product, but just less happy because there are things that they have to hack every day and it's not so cool. So do I love Power BI? Yes. Do I think that they need to put more effort into Power BI desktop? Absolutely freaking lovely. But I still love the product. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to continue using it. And I love using it every day. It's just a small nugs that, that you know, they, they annoy you, basically. So, <laughs> so why are you learning Python? Why I'm learning Python? And here's the thing. There are different reasons why I want to learn Python. The main one is that I always thought it would be cool to learn how to program, right? I come from the business world. I've never programmed anything, but I have an interest in it. So I thought that it would be really cool because Python has this data-related field. It would be such a cool complement to what I'm already doing it. So... <laughs> To, to put an analogy, for me, that I know Power BI learning Python, it would be like, you know, you know how to bike, let's learn how to ride a car, <laughs> you know? They, they complement each other. They have different business cases. They are both useful. They are both good to have, and one does not replace the other. At least it doesn't for me. So I'm learning Python because I want to program, and I actually want to program something very specific. Early in my Kerbal days, I was actually creating an Internet of Things product. Let me show you. It's so cool. They use e-papers. You see? This is the product. So it had like some touch panels and then you were supposed to vote on things. So <laughs> it never saw the light. Well, it did sell the light in one place, but then we... Long story. It's a story for another day. But... They have, I love e-papers, I think they are so cool. And they have this massive e-paper that you can buy and you can program it. And I wanted to program it because I want to do specific things with it. And to program it, you need to know Python. <laughs> if I learn how to program, which I want to do, and I learn Python, I can program e-papers and use it for my own. I'm not going to do any business with it. It's just for me. I think it would be such a cool project to have. I love to have side projects. Always have had side projects. Some of them have resulted in, for example, Power BI business. When I started Power BI, nobody in my company was doing Power BI. No one, not a single soul. But I did it because I thought it was, I loved it. Like, this is so cool. Let's learn it. Let's do it. Not that I need it. Well, it was useful in my job, but it, I could have done it with Excel back then because, you know, Power BI was not that developed back then. So I always have these side projects that some of them lead to something, some of them lead to my own happiness. <laughs> you know, let my creative juices flow. So... Yeah, I think that would be like super cool to be able to program and program an e-paper. I would love to do that. And when I actually asked you on Twitter, I said, hey, I want to learn Python. I've never programmed anything. Please give me some resources. What are you using? And then you guys were telling me like, hey, why don't you learn Matplotlib, Panda, Seaborn? And I, I told you like, well, no, I'm not doing it for that. But then it was like, is that, you know, you start thinking about it, like, why not? Especially because Charticulator was put on the freezer. Like, then I didn't have, I don't have any other tool to do, like, out of the box, non standard visualizations. And I, I really love to do that. So I wanted to do it. Then I said, ah, why not? Maybe I can actually check it out and see what it is because if it allows me to do what I could do with Charticulator now the Charticulator doesn't seem to be any movement that could be something and this is something that is developed and you know all that stuff so I actually went on an adventure and you know I've been doing 
uh, Makeover Mondays. I've picked Makeover Mondays that I like, and I've reproduced them with Charticulator. So I said, I'm going to do the same or I'm going to do with Matplotlib. Now, with the knowledge I have of Python, it's been a struggle, I tell you that. But it, I've been able to do cool things, in my opinion. I'm going to show you. So I have here uh, the heat map. You can actually um, interact with it, click on it, and it will show you the Ignite Park Ignite. And then I have this one too. Same thing with the... Um, Lollip it's not really a lollipop chart, but kind of. So this, I thought it was hard to do. So cool. And then I have the, oh, I love this. The design of this is so cool. None of these designs are mine. Makeover Monday, different people, okay? So don't think that I did the design. I just coded using Matplotlib. Python and NumPy, nothing else. And then I have this one, the rise of Latino players. I think it was... Andes that did that is so cool. A lot of the things that I've done here, I could not do with Charticulator because of the bugs. I mean, Charticulator could have been able to do it, just the bugs wouldn't allow it. And with Matplotlib, it was like, boom, boom, boom. You can't do anything. Check this out. This is so cool. This we've been able to do with Charticulator. So you can click on it, and then it will, you know, filter out, and then you will get the line. Highlighted. We should be able to do that in Power BI. I think, well, let's pause for a second. Power BI team has said now they are going to fix the visualization pane. So I am going to shop tap after this video forever. If they are going to fix it, they are going to take the time and they are going to do it so we don't need to complain anymore about it, okay? Just let them do it. That's my opinion on the thing. So not complaining. So here's another, oh, sorry, that's the code. So this is another one that is quite cool. It's about segmentation. So cool. And this is a segmentation for bar charts. And then I think these ones are my to-do projects. Yeah, this is my next project. So as you can see, I've been able to do a lot of things. And I've jumped into this directly because I wanted to know, is it worth it for me to learn? Am I do I have the capabilities that I want, that I have missed, to be able to do what I want in data visualization? And the answer is yes, I can. I, I've been doing it. It's so cool. And I know very little Python yet. So, yes. So hopefully this explains why I want to learn just Python. I want to learn how to program. I want to learn how to program an e-paper. And I want to learn how to you know, automate things. There's a Python library for everything there is. So it would be so cool to be able to know how to do it. And on top of that, I will be able to do data visualization. The, anything that I can imagine, I will be able to do it. I haven't been able to do that. And it's been a little bit frustrated, but hey, I thought, you know, I always blame my skills. Like, I, it's just me. It's just that I don't know how to do it. And it's, we're still there. <laughs> Hopefully with Matplotlib, they go away. So, any plans of, you know, putting Python and Power BI together? Well, as you've seen, it's a little bit slow. So, what Python in Power BI does is it generates images. And depending on the data, my coding is probably not the most efficient, so it's a little bit slow. It's not interactive either. Okay, so if you click on it, nothing else will falter because it renders as an image. And Power BI, you know, the enterprise gateway does not support either R or Python, okay? So those limitations make it the use case we're using Python together with Power BI a little bit limited, but it is still useful. It is still useful in a sense that sometimes you're going to find something that you really want to do and you have no other way to do it and then Python and Math probably would allow you to do it. So that's basically where I'm at. Okay, so to summarize, I still love Power BI. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to do videos. I enjoy working with it. It's just the small details that now they say they're going to fix it, so I'm going to shut up about it and give them the time to do it, okay? They now say that it will be done, and that's it. Now we just have to be patient. 
I want to learn Python and just Python because I want to learn how to program because I want to learn how to program e-papers and all the code I've seen is done in Python. And because it allows me now to start using Mathplotly, Pandas and NumPy to create any visualization I can imagine, which I'm so looking forward to that. Jupyter Lab is just freaking fantastic. It's like Power Query, like it's so cool. I mean, it gives me a Power Query vibes all over. I think it's super, super cool. So that's the reason why I chose just Python. Will I ever learn R? Who knows? Maybe, maybe if I would have a need for it, if I would see that Python doesn't do what I need, or I get bored and I want to do an art project or something, yeah, but it's going to take me years to learn Python, to be fair. So I am not see myself learning anything else anytime soon. So I want to get this Python thing going. And if you want to learn with me, we have two options. Either I do videos on Kerbal, the main channel, or I'll do it on the second channel. I've asked you if you wanted to have it in the main channel. You said yes. So I'm going to give it a go. If I see that there is an actual interest, I'll keep them there. But if there is not, I will move them to the second channel. You have asked me, like, Ruth, now if you are going to do Python videos, are you going to do less Power BI videos? And is that, that is a hard question to answer at the moment because, you know, I was doing three videos a week. And I'm not doing that anymore. I'm doing like one, two kind of thing. So I'm always going to continue doing Power BI videos. You're always going to get at least one Power BI video a week. But depending on the material that I have, you might get more. And then one Python one, depending on how it goes. Otherwise, again, I'll move it to the second channel. So yeah, <laughs> that's basically it. So yeah, the last thing, when am I going to start Python? videos, I will do it after the 25 days of Tax Friday's challenge is finished because that takes time, people, and I don't want to do anything on top of that. There's no time for it. But I hope it, ex it, it just explains everything and makes it clear that I'm not doing an exit. I'm just upskilling. I'm just learning something else that is data related that I think it will help me and it will help you if you decide to follow along and learn with me. So yeah, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> and I hope it explains everything and I will see you again on the next video. It will have to be the solution for the 25 days. Of That's Friday, it's day 15 to no, day 11 to 15. <laughs> okay. Um, enjoy your day, have fun, let me know if you have any thoughts on this video in the comments below and I'll see you soon.